Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. There are four verses to the Star Spangled Banner written by Francis Scott Key. And from the fourth verse, I want to read the last four lines. Then conquer we must when our cause is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner and triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. I want a live patriot. Come on, patriots, with a pledge of allegiance this morning. Good morning on a Thursday. And a good, good morning to you on this Thursday, September 10th already. My goodness sakes, where is the year going? My goodness, we're what? 50, I'm going to make sure my calculations are pretty close. I think 54 days from the election. And, of course, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, safe, clean environment, and the best in tires. And, of course, don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Let's go to the phone line right now and start things off right with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Sean. Appreciate that. I just want to say, patriots, listen carefully, please. I welcome all the different pledgers to call in with the Pledge of Allegiance and with the transitions and changes that the Democrats are making to our pledge and to our country. I urge you to stand up and be counted as a patriot, and I welcome you to do the Pledge of Allegiance on our program. Absolutely. Uh, Right now, we're going to take a look at the weather forecast and i think gene is going to have some good news for us for the weekend and the weather brought to you by knr rental at 256 south 600 west of hayburn right smack dab on the burley paul highway can't miss them Mm-mm. whole front yard is full of the tools and equipment you need to finish any task any task give them a call too if you can't stop by six seven eight three one two two and right now here's gina with the weather feels a little bit like fall today, but we are going to be warming up as we make our way through the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Expecting sunny skies for today. Slight breeze out of the east at about 6 miles an hour. High of 73 tonight. Clear skies with a low of 43 tomorrow. Sunny. High of close to 80 degrees. And the winds are going to be picking up just a little bit on the west in the afternoon. Gusts as high as 18 miles an hour. By Friday night, clear skies, low of 45. Sunny and 82 for Saturday. Could get close to 90 for Sunday and Monday. Stop look at your weather for Shazam, as Gomer and Goober used to say. Yes, sir. We're going to have a great forecast for the weekend. Right now, 45 degrees outside our studio, and the weather brought to you by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. You know, they've got all the tools for both long and short, uh, short term. That's with an O, not an E. Short term rental. So give them a call or stop by. Let them help you finish any project. K&R 
rental. Roger and the crew on the Burley Paul Highway, 678-3122. Standby caller, I'll be right there. I want to urge everybody to remember we're going into a transition in the weather, and it's going to get chillier and chillier. Make sure that you're all set with your heating for this fall, and you've got efficient uh, air filters for your furnace and everything else. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Yup, yup, they get there at 7.30 in the morning and stay till 5 or later, Monday through Friday at 2600 Overland and Burley. The number to call, 678 where they provide warm winters and cool summers, and they have for almost seven decades, Ramsey Heating and Electric. Caller, a good morning to you. And on top of the morning to you, too. My thank friend. you. Thank and you. also your lovely bride. Uh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Keith, because, uh, yes, my lovely bride, every day, Every day she's showing progress and getting better, and uh, she absolutely told me to thank everybody for all their kind thoughts and wishes. So thank you very much. And she is very welcome. Now, back to the real world. Yes. You know, Joe Biden is the smartest person that has ever run for president of the United States. Well, of course, that's, spec- that's speculation on your part. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. When, he, when he's asked a question, he has the answer. Uh-huh. It's right there on his teleprompter. Or, or, Keith, or piped into his ear with an earpiece. You think? Oh, I know it. Okay. Well, maybe he's not the smartest knife in the drawer. No, and I want to be fair here. I want to be fair here, Keith. Uh, Really, I've got to be fair. But this is a shell of a man. This is a shell of a man of his old self. I mean, if you can't see this, you're blind or you put the blinders on yourself. If you listen to him speak, he's an empty jar that makes a lot of verbal faux pas. He absolutely, when you watch, look, and listen to him, he's very unsteady and very unsure. And there are times when he'll put his hand up by his ear, and that gives it away. They're piping information into him, and also, like you said on the on the teleprompter, I do not understand, honestly, the American public and how they can support this ticket of a man that cannot fulfill the duties the way they should be fulfilled as president of the United States. United States, and then even worse, Keith, Kamala Harris. I am absolutely not ashamed to say that woman scares me. Scare me to death. You know, when Joe Biden said, move that teleprompter a little closer, yeah. that was a dead giveaway what was going on. Oh, yeah, I mean... Uh, but I'd like to be like you or me in the audience and say, Joe, how old are you? Well, the thing is, though, Keith... Fingers out and start counting. Yeah, really. The thing about Joe Biden is right now, he's not entertaining any audiences other than just perhaps uh, reporters in very small numbers. He's not taking questions from the uh, larger numbers of people that would like to see him and or go hear him. And I'm going to just throw this out to you. I honestly still feel... There is a great chance, and I think it's not good for the American public, that he will back out of the 29th debate. Well, after watching him on television, I don't know why Fox gives him so much time. Well, no. Now, that's not fair. There's no rebuttals or anything. Well, that's not fair, though. I've got to say this, and I, I, you're a dear friend. I don't think it's fair to say that Fox is giving him this, that, and the other. They are trying to be fair and balanced, and they are trying to give him as much airtime as perhaps he might want and or ask for. But And, of course, then he also pays for the ads on Fox, his committee. But uh, I'm in total agreement with you when you first said that he just uh, he's not cutting the cake i'm not trying to run the man down because of his age i'm certainly not trying to run the man down because of his frailties but the fact is he is not not of presidential caliber 
somehow could we relate to the other NBC, CSBC, and all them other crappy places? Why don't they give equal time to the President of the United States? It's disgusting. It's disgusting, and any time they give him is negative time. As far as bashing and thrashing and creating problems and condemning him, I totally agree with you. Keith, got to run and do a commercial, but God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Let's hear what the rest of your listeners want to say. I'd like to hear what... I would love, Keith, now that you mentioned it, I would love to hear a Biden support supporter call i would love to hear how and why they could support this man thank you very much i appreciate your call well be sure if that ever happened be sure to get their name and address so we can go harass (laughs) no we are not going to do that i respect their opinion but we'll have a little arbitration thank you keith appreciate it (laughs) All right. Bye. Don't forget Dino Septic Service. Oh, man, these folks do the job that you don't want to do. You don't want to be standing out there trying to pump out a septic tank. No. And Dino Septic Service serves such a large area. Grouse Creek to American Falls, Twin Falls, Jerome, Burley, Rupert area. Wow. They're in demand for their services because they are the best. Numbers to call, 436-6526 or Burley, 678 or Twin Falls 735-8281. Fast, fair, friendly service to get the job done that you don't want to do. Dino Septic Service, absolutely great. And they pull in the yard with that big truck that says, Smells Cargo on the way. Dino Septic Service. Uh, let's see what else have I got cooking here. Oh, I want to remind you, too, about a big sale that's coming up, managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Yes, 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 yes. Robert and Mary Luff Retirement Sale. It's going to be at 11 o'clock this Saturday, September 12th, located in Richfield at 862 North, 1250 East, and you'll see the auction signs. Lunch by the Cook Shack. They're going to have vehicles and tractors and stock trailers and cattle equipment and shop tools and furniture and household goods, antiques and collectibles. they got a good-looking horse trailer there they're going to sell, too. Hey, don't forget, Robert and Mary Luff Retirement Sale this Saturday, and that's September 12th, starting at 11, managed by, and it's up in Richfield, managed by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. No sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, they sell them all. All right, give me a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. A few months ago, we saw on television on uh, some of the networks that would show and depict what kind of crime is going on in the United States. We saw a very low-life loser walking down the street and with his left fist reach out and punch in the side of the head a innocent elderly woman trying to walk down the sidewalk. Evidently this was some kind of sick perverted game or something for him to pass the time. And this woman absolutely fell down on the street. Call her, stand by just a minute. Fell down on the street, almost unconscious. And this low-life loser just walked away. But yesterday I saw another, another example of a worthless punk hitting another elderly woman in the face. And he rode off on a bicycle. But this story has a better ending than the first one. Obviously, four firemen saw this biker hit this woman, and they were out in front of their fire station, and they ran down the sidewalk. I mean, these guys took off like they were running in the Olympics. And they tackled the guy off his bicycle, and let's just say... They weren't real careful about his well-being. I'll just put it that way. And I'm cheering them on. Yay! God bless the firemen. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. The menu for the Bradley Senior Center today is pigs in the blanket and all other trimmings that go along. 
I understand, I understand, Joe, that you went over to the senior center last night at about uh, 10 o'clock and stayed till past midnight wrapping up all those pigs. That's right. <laughs> okay. Get ready. All right. Joe Taylor, senior center, great food every day at noon. Get some. Thank you, Joe. God bless you. Call in for takeout order. All right. And, Joe, what is the number? The number is 208. Eight seven eight eight six four six. You did it, Joe. By golly, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, All All right, Joe. God bless you, man. Thank you much. Joe Taylor, good guy. Really good guy. Hey, coming up this weekend on Saturday, oh, man, I'm certainly hoping I can run up there for just a little bit and take in that great sale, Zollinger Quarter Horse Production Sale, 32nd Annual. Oh, it's going to have the preview at 10 o'clock, sale at 11 at the ranch at 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley. Top-notch Colts and Phillies. Oh, they got mines. They got talent. They got personalities. They've got color. They've got good looks. Confirmation. Oh yeah. Call Jerry at six seven zero three eight three three. The best Zollinger Quarter Horses thirty second annual production sale this Saturday, starting with the preview at ten a.m. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know, it's unbelievable. Open up the prisons um, because of fear that. A prisoner might die of uh, COVID-19. They turn them out loose on the streets, and the crime rate, of course, is going up. Many of the same ones that were in jail are now back in jail uh, after committing heinous crimes. But the morality in here, in our country, has just gone down, total down the sewer. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's incredible, Zeb, that we continue to allow this to, to take place. Well, let me let me interject. Whoa, whoa, Adrian, wait a minute. Let me let me jump in on occasion. Number 1, there have always been vermin walking our streets and hurting people. That's that's a gimme. That's taken place for hundreds of years in this United States, over 200 years. But the fact is, there was punishment that was meted out to these people that made others think, whoa, maybe I don't want to do that. We've got away from punishment. We've got away from making sure that's a deterrent to crime. And when I watch these punks that are worthless, punching elderly people in the face, laughing and walking down the street, you know my attitude. They should have been taken out with a two-by-four. You have no kidding. Uh, give them the, you know, get their attention. It's ab- you're, you're absolutely correct that uh, here you got Koala Harris um, having uh, fundraising for to pick close bail for these uh, criminals that, that are burning and looting and murdering and posting bail for them. I mean, that tells you a lot about the Democratic Party in general. I mean, they they want to defund the police. They want a national police force. That's the ultimate goal. And do away with the sheriff, local police, and make everything federal. I mean, from the top down instead of from the bottom up. It's just the contrast between the Republicans and Democrats. It it is absolutely right, and I tell you what, I believe in law and order, but I also believe in a severe punishment for criminals. None of this mamby-pamby slap on the wrist, slap on the knuckles, and then have a turnstile justice to where, if not any bail, they're out on the street. And I'd love to see some billy clubs to the teeth at some of these people. I know that sounds harsh, and I am advocating violence. These people have got to learn that you can't beat people up on the street just like a game well never and take it down to the school level the teachers really can't discipline the the students i mean if you do um they're going to be the ones that are going to lose their job yeah and even i grew up about the same generation i can tell you my first and second grade teacher if you spoke a bad word and bad words back then were a lot less than what they are now you got your mouth washed out with soap. That's right. That's right. And I personally... Twice. Uh, personally, I, I never did 
have to partake, but many of my classmates did. And uh, I'm not sure which brick, what type of soap tasted the worst or the best, but um, it did happen. But we there was discipline, but a lot of the discipline problems start right in the schools. The kids get away with murder, and I have a friend that's stuck. And anyway, so... Um, no, I agree with you, Adrian. ...is doing better, and... Uh, you have a great weekend. All right. It looks like we got more smoke coming our way thanks to these environmental policies I... and failed policies since they took out DDT and thinning and logging forests. I agree with you, Adrian. Thank you very much for your call. God bless. You Thank bet. you. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you. Caller, I'll be right there. i got to pay some bills. I want to tell everybody about Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland and Burley. Oh, I, I'm, I just can't wait for the day that Deanne is going to feel better and we can go in, pick up the menu, and, of course, I'm going to order breakfast. That's my favorite. Anytime, all the time. Uh, lunch, dinner, all the desserts. Oh, yeah. The Home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland. Overland in Burley, and the other location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Nice, nice people. Thomas, Michelle, all the staff. I tell you, we're going to have a party when my wife gets to feeling better. Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. You stop in and enjoy great food today. Caller, thank you for your patience. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Uh, this is a organized movement by the Democratic Party, financed by foreign governments to bring us down. And my feelings are one of the reasons why President Trump is bringing some of our troops back home is because when he is elected, and he will be elected, we're going to need those Trumps to break the back of what's going on in our streets right now. Because the way things are going, the Democratic Party plans on burning down every city in this country if they can just to get the Democratic Party back in business. Well, I agree with you. I had a call the other day. A, re a very rude person called me on my cell phone, and I openly give my number, my cell phone number, 312-2976. And this person called me a fool. A fool for thinking that uh, the crime and all the burning and looting and everything is going to stop when Donald Trump gets elected. And I said, wait a minute, re-elected. I said, wait a minute, uh, I want to tell you something right now. I am in favor of a crack down hard on society. We have got to restore law and order. We have got to restore respect for police forces, sheriff's offices, etc. And I really do not care. Underline those words. I do not care if some of these troublemakers hit the pavement because of their actions. I'm not going to expand on that, but you get my drift. Well, look how many cities where the uh, police departments are, are quitting. Yeah. They're walking off the jobs. And for a reason. And that reason is it's going to give Donald Trump the opportunity to put the military in there, declare martial law where it has to be declared, and crush these people, no matter how many of them get hurt, how many of them get bayoneted. It has to stop, or we've lost our country, and we will never get it back. I... I'm not going to argue with you, my dear friend. I am total agreement that we must restore law and order. These aren't protesters. Anybody that thinks these people are protesters, they're an idiot with an IQ of 10. These people are anarchists that want to destroy this country. Tony, Mary, God bless you both. Thank you so much. Well, they're being financed by a foreign government. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Talk to me, caller. Evidently, uh, they, hung uh, they hung up. Well, don't do that. It might have been a Biden supporter, and they have a patience level of maybe three, <laughs> three seconds. Uh, someone from Veterans Services. Oh, that was my dear friend Chuck Driscoll. Have him call. Chuck, call me back, dog. Gone it. I want you to call and tell everybody what's going on. While I'm waiting for that call, he called yesterday, and I told him to call first hour this morning. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts. Absolutely. They've got all the equipment for the 
jobs of lifting and digging and pushing and carrying and grading and leveling. You name it, boy, they got the tough ones right there. Barry Equipment and Rental, don't forget, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Woo, that echo went through my head. 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin and the Nampa location. Great financing programs and lease programs for you. Barry Equipment and Rental, you get a hold of these good, good people today. They've got all the equipment you need. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. How are you this morning? Chuck Driscoll, by gully, I'm just super good. What's going on in your world? Well, you know, we've talked about this before, that 22 veterans a day, on average, commit suicide. And it's a number that scares the junior out of me, and it just, you know, it's it's something that is really personal to me because these guys are my buddies, my friends, my, you know, uh, and it's it's just a terrible thing. And so today, over here at our um, uh, our little office here in Rupert, we're doing a, uh, a suicide uh, education event, and uh, it's going to be from 11 to 5 today at 625 Fremont Avenue in Rupert. And... Uh, for the veterans, we're going to serve a light lunch from about 11.30 to 1.30 or 2. And uh, we're going to hand out a lot of information on what, you know, how we can best uh, help people and recognize people that are, you know, becoming suicidal. Chuck, if I may, and Sean over at the station, I got a little feedback here. Help me, please. Chuck, if I may ask... Are the situations of suicide in much greater numbers with this generation of our warriors other than previous confrontations and wars like the Korean conflict, Vietnam, World War II, etc.? Are there more today? You know, I don't have numbers that will support that, but I'll tell you one thing. It's, it's not a respecter of how old they are. We've had... Uh, Vietnam veterans, we've had Korean veterans, we've had Gulf War veterans committing suicide. Uh, It just depends on when they finally lose all hope. You know, Chuck, I will do anything on this program to help support you and what you're doing because every life matters to me. Uh, when I hear certain groups uh, that stand up and wave their hands and fingers at the camera and say that their particular race matters more than anybody else, no, it's not true at all. All lives matter. And our service people that have put their lives on the line for us and our freedom, please know, Chuck, that I'll do anything on this program to help support you. And you have, and I appreciate it very much. This is, you know, it's an epidemic, and it's not just veterans. That's the sad part of this. There are a million people a year worldwide that commit suicide. That's a number that, you know, staggers your imagination. Yes, it does. You know... So, you know, we're we're just trying to do a little bit of our part. We'll be be handing out uh, candles... Uh, that we're asking everybody to light at 8 o'clock tonight uh, to go along with the International uh, Day of Suicide uh, Awareness. And we hope that we, you know, we can do just a little bit in our community to make things better. Chuck Driscoll, you are always welcome on this program, and I salute you for what you're doing or trying to do. Thank you so much. God bless. Uh, God bless you, Zeb. Keep the faith. Thank you, sir. See you later. Thank you. It's troubling to me. I mean, uh, hold on, caller. I'll be right there. That we have people that get so low and nobody's there. Maybe not a friendly handshake or maybe a good word. Uh, Somebody that can see that they're in such a depressed state. Uh, I just absolutely agree with Chuck that uh, we need to do all we can to help not only our soldiers, but everyone that is in despair and needs help. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning again, Jeb. I want you to know that Chuck Driscoll is the finest represented the VA that we've ever had in this area. Bless him that he can continue on. 
Now, the other thing I wanted to say is I'd be willing to bet you money on this, but I don't think he'd take me up on it. And that is, those four f firemen that took after that guy on the bicycle and give him what was coming to him, there will be a lawsuit against that fire department. You can count on it. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you, Keith, because unfortunately that's the status and state of our uh, crime and punishment in this country, that the the evildoer is going to turn around and sue because he might have got smacked in the lips or hit in the belly or whatever the case might be. I salute these firemen. They weren't vigilante justice at all. They were taking this person down so he did not get away with the crime that he committed. I know for a fact that uh, these firemen should be given keys to the city for what they did. Absolutely. But you know, these ambulance chasing lawyers are lined up to take their case. Yeah, well, there's they're as sleazy as the perpetrator of the crime. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Keith, thank you for calling back. Thank you much. You bet. You want to hear something that's really sick and perverted? I saw this story as I was thumbing through about 30 or 40 stories. Pardon me? Yeah. Okay. I heard somebody saying something and i I'm sorry about that i forgot to turn the pot off someone else was calling okay well i'll take that call <laughs> sean don't scare me like that <laughs> good morning caller you're on the air go ahead along with all these criminals getting out of jail and all this stuff we need to start cracking down on judges oh, oh. lady, lady. you reason, are 100 percent that is when was the last time you heard that a guy raped a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a six-year-old, an 18-year-old, and got life in prison, 90 years, 40 years. I know of a case in Montana where the principal raped a 14-year-old girl. Oh, my. And the judge gave him 30 days, and the little girl felt so bad she committed suicide over it. Oh, no. This kind of a story is absolutely upsetting to me. Sean, again, we've got that feedback on this call, please. Uh, I, I totally agree with you that the judicial system has got to go back with an equal balancing of the scales. In other words, it's been perpetrated now by the left to have the evildoer basically oh that poor man he grew up in poverty oh that poor man his mom and dad divorced when he was a little boy oh that poor man he just never was trained right uh, on the right things to do baloney you commit a crime you pay and do the time and i'm fed up with this mamby pamby attitude of letting people off easy yeah, well, and there's another case where a guy raped a two-year-old, and because the two-year-old couldn't testify, the judge let him off. My dear lady, I want to say this, and I want to be halfway sensible about what verbiage I use. But when it comes to that person that would do that to a child of that age or any age as a minor, there are certain things that are done on the ranch to cattle in the spring that need to be done to that particular person. Amen. But I think we need to start weeding out some of these judges who have no backbone. I could not agree with you more, and thank you for your call. God bless you. Thank you. God bless, and, and blessings to Deanne that she improves. That she is getting better, and your prayers are very much appreciated. There is power of prayer, and that lady of mine is doing much better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, by the way, that brings to light something that I want to say, and I hope she's listening, and that's Gina over at the station, and I hope Sean will let her know I said this. Um, there's been a lot of turmoil in my life over the last three to four weeks, and uh, I've been at the end of the old rope 
holding on the knot occasionally. Gina and Sean and everybody have jumped in to help me with various things, and yesterday was a good example. I had to take Deanne in for a very important checkup post leaving the hospital, and it involved me leaving the last half hour of this program yesterday. And she called me, volunteered, and says, I'll do it, I'll do it, and jumped in and took care of it, and God bless her for being such a wonderful uh, person to work with. I appreciate that. Uh, calls are welcome, 436 224 You want to hear really how bad, and don't minimize this. Don't minimize this. It's happening all over the United States. I had a story on it yesterday about how we as white people Caucasians. Why, we need to apologize. We need to hang our head in shame. We need to apologize for being successful. We need to apologize for the color of our skin. And we need to admit that we are all racist and we are all with white privilege. A Minnesota public school superintendent, by the way, she's black, told all the teachers to examine their whiteness and how they could stop perpetrating racism. And she used George Floyd as her poster boy. Why are they using criminals and felons? She said, we need to examine the role of whiteness that results in white supremacy. This is a Minnesota public school superintendent. And you think we ain't got problems in River City? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, earlier you were talking about... You didn't do the right thing, Randy. Randy. Can you hear me? I can, but you didn't start off right. You're supposed to say, good morning. Good morning, Jeb. I'm glad your wife is feeling better. <laughs> that a boy. Uh, forgive me. I don't want to waste your time. No, that's all right. I'm just giving uh, you a hard time. Pedophilia is... Across this world, 800,000 children go missing. Let's say half of them are never found. And uh, that is a fact. 400,000 children go missing in this country every year, and nobody knows where they are or what's happening to them. When you delve into pedophilia and what these the sickness of our world, our nation, is so depraved that it's it's so, it's so sickening that it's a subject you don't even want to get into but it, it's something that we have to face up to and uh when you start studying this you become uh you, you just can't even believe that we are where we are how a nation would want to would be sexually attracted to a child and you go well how could that ever be well i don't know zeb but it, it, it's occurring, and it's a terrible shame, and I, I don't want to get into it any more than that, but I'll tell you what, I don't know how you can turn back from that and come back and, and fall on your knees and say, forgive me, Heavenly Father, and never be the same. Once you poison your mind... I don't know that you can ever forget it. You know, let me, so, let me interject something. Christina, let me... Good host. No, yes, I agree she's, uh, with you. Aware, she's updated, she's good. She's good at it. So when she takes over, I I appreciate her uh, ability. All right, Randy, let me say something to you. The reason we have, in my opinion, as many or most of the problems today is because I honestly, firmly believe, and if somebody's offended by this, I don't care. We have got a way from the basics of the Bible, and we've got away from God. There's no question about it. Man will not save man. There isn't a man on the face of this planet that can save us. The only thing can save us is Jesus Christ. And you have to say to yourself, uh, you are my Savior. My mother said, the first thing you got to do, son, is know that Christ is your Savior. I agree. I agree. I do. I agree. Randy, I do appreciate your calls always. Thank you for that this morning. Appreciate it. I'm, I couldn't agree more. You know, there are many, many people 
And again, I'm 72 years old. I don't care if I say something that's going to offend somebody. I really don't. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest on this program. I'm not going to mamby-pamby or put peanut butter and jelly on it and everything else. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I think we've got away from God and the basic principles of the Bible, the Ten Commandments. We've absolutely covered them up. And if you don't like that, I had a call the other day saying, you know, you're always talking about God and churches. and everything. Yeah, and I'm going to keep on. Again, if you don't like what's being said... Take your thumb and the forefinger, and it's so easy. I'll send you a little diagram what to do. Turn the dial, because that's going to stay on this program. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Quickly, I'll take your call before the weather. Well, good morning, Zeb, and God bless you for what you do do. Keep that going. Um, You know, as far as the, the black people wanting repetitions and all this crap, if you look back in history... The black man was the first one to sell black slaves to the rich black people. Mm -hmm. They shipped them in by the busloads and the shiploads. So if they want repartitions... Reparations. Reparations. Reparations, whatever. um, They need to start looking in their own back door. I am fed, fed up... And absolutely sick and tired, and I don't care who calls and wants to arbitrate, more power to you, because I'm not going to back down. When we start a reparations program to give certain individuals and certain races certain amounts of money that the general taxpaying public is going to have to be liable for, this country's going to go down the toilet and somebody's going to be standing there with a flusher to make sure we don't come back up. I'm fed up with this notion. Oh, so am I. I mean, I, I, I was raised in, in uh, a part of California that was predominantly black people. I didn't know we weren't supposed to play together. Um, some of my best friends were black people. Um, they worked hard for what they got. They didn't, you know, complain about their ancestry being, you know, what it was. People need to just Pull their big people pants up and get on with life. You know, Donna, this... Years ago, doesn't have anything to do with us. Why should we as taxpayers have to pay them anything? Get up off your lazy butts and go to work. Well, you've got to admit, Donna, this is nothing more than a ploy for certain individuals. Al Sharpton's one of them. The more there is untrust, the more there is unrest, and the more there is uncivility or incivility in our country, the more money he puts in his pocket. Oh, heck yeah. And um, isn't he one of those tax evaders that owes millions of dollars in taxes? Oh. How come he's not... How come he's not in prison? Oh, come on, Donna. He's an old man. Surely he just made some mistakes on the bottom line. Um, I'm not going to comment on that. Because I'm not going to comment on that. Because I'm not I've got to run to the weather, my dear friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good day. All right, thank good you. Good morning. Al Sharpton should be the poster boy for absolute ridiculousness. This man is so jaded, and actually, that's how he makes his money. The more strife, the more there is trouble between the races, he's going to stand there. He used to be a real fatso. Remember, and then he lost all the weight and everything, and now he looks like uh, uh, bones hanging skin in a closet. And I I tell you what, him and Jesse Jackson, and the list goes on and on, are absolute race baiters that make their living with hate. Uh, don't forget the weather forecast. I better not because I'm running late. Brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And, of course, the number to call, make an appointment for a hearing screening, and they'll give you the best technology in helping with your hearing problems. 312-0957. I'll say it again. 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. You call them today. Here's Gina with the weather. 
feels a little bit like fall today, but we are going to be warming up as we make our way through the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Expecting sunny skies for today. Slight breeze out of the east at about 6 miles an hour. High of 73 tonight. Clear skies with a low of 43 tomorrow. Sunny, high of close to 80 degrees, and the winds are going to be picking up just a little bit on the west in the afternoon. Gusts as high as 18 miles an hour. By Friday night, clear skies, low of 45. Sunny and 82 for Saturday. Could get close to 90 for Sunday and Monday. That's look at your weather for Thank you, Gina. And right now, I want to tell you that I'm really proud to have these folks on our air sponsoring our weather, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And believe me, they know. And they know that each treatment plan is customized for your individual needs. Make an appointment today. Call 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Calls are welcome. 436 221 Eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. I just want to give a great big shout out again. It felt so good to say it. Hooray! Hooray for the firemen in New York that literally ran down a uh, bicyclist that had just punched a elderly woman in the face. They ran and tackled this guy. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the video or not, but it just made me feel good. These firemen, and they're all in good shape, and I mean, they're absolutely supermen without a cape. They ran this guy down, and there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They tackled him in that bike, and this old boy that perpetrated this crime, I think maybe he had a flash across his mind that said, Boy, I shouldn't have done what I did. Uh, Congratulations, kudos. If more people, more people would take the initiative to do this when there's a crime against society and are elderly, etc., I think you'd see a diminishment of the vermin on the street. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The start of the National Football League is tonight. Now, wait a minute. I'm not advocating watching it. As a matter of fact, I'm saying something quite the opposite. I am not going to watch it. The uh, Cincinnati Bengals are not playing tonight. They're playing on Sunday. But as a team, as a team, the Bengals are considering... Of course, considering taking a kneeling position during the National Anthem this Sunday, or they are considering, and they're going to come out with their statement later today or tomorrow, they're considering just staying in the locker room. So they're considering kneeling during the anthem or not even coming on the field while the anthem's being played. Let me tell you something. These prima donnas, these overpaid, underworked jocks making millions of dollars, I hope they do stay in the locker room during the national anthem. And for some strange reason, I hope somebody locks them in there so they can't come out and play the rest of the game. I have no use for these athletes that dishonor the country that has made them multimillionaires. Don't give me this garbage about BLM, Black Lives Matter. Don't give me this garbage about, oh, we're we're so enslaved. Ah, baloney. As you get in your Porsche after your game and go to your mansion, don't cry the blues to me. Our major sponsor, I want to thank your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you, boy, and serving is the key word, with the best of tires, all the tires, all the sizes, all the tread designs. Wow! They've got an inventory that will knock your boots off. And don't forget, too, they have uh, trained technicians in every department. I mean, for your brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this. The best 
are at the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Please stop in today. You'll see what I mean. And if you're on the farm, the ranch, or the dairy, and you need help out there, hey, they've got service trucks. Zip, zip, zip. They'll be right there to help you. James in Buell. Dan on Pole Line in Twin Falls. Lane and Rupert. Mike and Jerome. Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin. The Twist family and Paul. And my buddy Trent. He's going to be on the air with us, I think. Um, da-dum, da-dum, the last hour. Trent on Overland in Burley. Your or Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Wow, we've got a lot coming up this next hour, too. We've got the Chamber Report with Penny Main, and we've got an interview with my old buddy, emphasis on the word old, Nick over at Burley Physical Therapy and also Elite Fitness, and then all oh, kinds of goodies for the rest of the morning. And uh, I want to just leave you with one thought real quick. The mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, yeah, he's not liked at all by two-thirds of the city voters and so i think we can be saying in the next election goodbye ted but here's the idiocy of what's going on over in portland when they were interviewing people they found out in the interview if this is true 76 percent of the people interviewed were in favor of black lives matter huh the people that are causing all the insurrection this is idiocy personified my goodness. We're going to take a break and be back in about seven minutes. Oh, welcome back. Hour number two on this Thursday, September the 10th, Zebeth Ranch, and of course with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations, very safe, clean environment, and of course the best in tires. And our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. want to remind everybody, too, about our dear friend Joel Hughes. Steward, his staff, and family serving you and your family at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. The number to call, 436-5636. When there is the passing of a loved one, they are there with very, very flexible hours to serve you and your family with the best possible support and comfort, and always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. They care. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Oh, my goodness sakes, I've got one other note, and then I'm going to go over the river and through the woods of the desert, in this case, over to Penny, Maine, at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Stand by. Don't forget, too, our dear, dear friends at Denny's Restaurant. Oh, good eating all the time, anytime at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 611 North Overland in Burley, and also at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, desserts, oh, yeah, all of this and so much more served by really, really nice people at America's Diner. I urge you to stop in. It's the Home Zeb's Lunch Bunch, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I was gone last Thursday, but I'm back, and I get a chance to talk to a radiant, beaming, sweet young lady that's the CEO and president of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Penny Maine. Good morning. Like the I like the radiant and young part. That's for darn sure. I'm going to call you more often. Well, you should because I'm just loaded with all sorts of goodies. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's great to hear you back on the radio, Zeb. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we just want to top off uh, what a great success we had last week at our golf scramble. Um, it it was a big hit. I think timing's everything. Um, you know, people were ready to get out, have a great time, do some golfing. A lot of a lot of golfers haven't been able to participate in scrambles this summer, so I think ours was, uh, you know, uh, perfect. Uh, uh, the weather was great. Uh, people showed up. Um, our title sponsors, Dot Foods, Minidoka Memorial, Idaho and Foods, Project Mutual. Uh, so many more people to thank. But above all, I want to thank Jen Cutler and her team, uh, Jenna's from D11s. Um, uh, her team uh, really helped us make this thing happen. I'm not a golfer, and they are. And boy, howdy, uh, they got it done and they did it right. And so we're so grateful. Uh, it was our biggest fundraiser of the year. And so, again, just a huge big shout-out um, 
for our good chamber members and and uh, everybody who suits up and who suits up and shows up and help, help us out every day. So we're so grateful for mm-hmm. that. A um, couple of other things happening. Uh, Business After Hours is back. We're looking forward to that. Uh, Thursday, September seventeenth, actually a week from today, five to eight p.m. Brought to you by Carney Real Estate Team, Keller Williams, and the Minicasha Chamber. It's going to take place at Sonia's Event Center, which is on East Main, right next to Sean Hing. Uh, if you know where Sean Hing's at in Burley, you'll know where Sonia's Event Center is. It's going to be a great chance for you to catch up uh, with lots of your business partners maybe you haven't seen for a while, uh, reconnect with them, and, uh, of course, learn more about the real estate market, which is fast-moving in the Minicasha area. That's for darn sure. And, uh, and what Carney Real Estate is doing here locally. I will say that uh, every single day, surprisingly, we have calls from all over the area with regard to wanting relocation packets, which the Chamber provides. And that is a packet that includes lots of information about the area, what's going on, Chamber members, um, just various things that people would like to know about the area. Uh, and uh, obviously a relocation packet means just that. They're thinking about relocating. and. The magnitude of that over the last two or three months, I think, uh, because of all the things that are happening, uh, you know, Idaho's looking pretty good. And so the real estate market is booming right now, and um, we're very fortunate for that to be happening. But uh, if you want to know more about Carney Real Estate, head to that business after hours next Thursday night because it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot going on in this area, as you know, Zeb, and uh, what we do here at the Chamber of Commerce primarily is support our chamber members first because they support us. So lots of things that we talk about, the majority of them every week with you, uh, has to do with our chamber members. The best way to find out about what's going on in the area, and as your cohort, Sharon, would always say, you know, uh, people shouldn't complain about not having anything to do because there's lots to do, and there's and that's true. And uh, we'd love to have you be part of, of uh, the Monday Motivator. It's an e-blast that goes out every Monday morning. You're welcome to receive it in your e-box if you want. You don't have to be a chamber member. But it will keep you up to date on things that are happening throughout the Minicasha area, as well as um, uh, local events that are happening, too. So at, at any rate, it's a great, great um, chance to be part of that. All you have to do is call us, and we'll get you on our um, on our email list. So it's really, really that simple. Um, if you want to be part of the Chamber of Commerce, we'd love to have you do that. Uh, we've got great members. We're, we're growing uh, in leaps and bounds here, and we're grateful for that. Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, typically we're open. Um, call us at 679-4793 or check out our website. By the way, uh, check out our website and go to Golf Scramble uh, along the menu board. Uh, we've got all of our pictures from our event last week uh, posted there. Um, it's just a great resource for all things that are going on here in Minicasha, minicashachamber.com. Are you done? I'm finished. <laughs> Holy smokes, I mean, that was as rapid fire as a machine gun. That was really good. Holy cow. Well, gee whiz, thanks. Well, you know, of course, with the extra few seconds that we have been provided, I will, of course, take a little time in asking you your trivia question for this week. I didn't want you to think that I'd forgotten about you. Well... You know, I'm I'm not surprised that you haven't. I I was quite certain you would throw something my way, so um, start throwing. Okay, get ready to catch this. I think you're going to get this because you're pretty sharp about this. I know, but I, I I lie. I'm sorry. I know you do. But this particular actor that I'm talking about co-starred okay. with Bill Cosby in the TV series I Spy. And later, later he played Deborah's dad on Everybody Loves Raymond. Who was he? Oh, um, um, oh, what is his name? I want to say Ed something, but I don't think that's right. No, you're not even uh, in the right end of the alphabet. I, uh, oh, darn, um, Time is up. The okay. lovely lady that's the CEO and president of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce has, ladies and gentlemen, sorrowfully failed again. Lost again. I, I don't like to claim myself as a loser, but in this situation, I am really... Uh, things aren't looking good for me. I know that when I say his name, you're going to go, Oh! Are you ready? Yeah. Robert Culp. 
Hubert Cope. Oh, dang it. You know what? You know what's my problem during COVID? You know what I've watched too much of? What's that? Guy Fieri's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. <laughs> and, and I... I I have watched, wait, uh, while other people have been sorting out closets and remodeling their entire houses, I have um, added a COVID-19, uh, and we'll leave it at that, and um, I've watched a lot of diners, drive-ins, and dives, and I think I'm going to have to change networks. Well, you know, I, I will help you, uh, even though your record is dismal, and I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> I want to thank you on behalf of my business to yours. You are an excellent uh, leader of the Chamber of Commerce, CEO and President Penny Main, even though trivia is not your forte. I'm, I'm, I'm lousy at it. It's okay. I can handle that. Okay. Anyway, thank you for all you do. Um, say hello to Deanne for us. And, uh, again, I appreciate you so much, Zeb. You guys have a great day. God bless you. Thanks, Penny. You too. All right, Penny Main, Minnecasha Chamber of Commerce. Uh, let's see what else have I got to tell. Oh, let me see. I got to check my little list here. Oh, Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, big production sale this Saturday. Do not miss. Do not miss this sale. If you're into horses like I am, boy, you're going to see some really, really good colts and fillies. Oh my goodness sakes! This is going to be Saturday, starting with the preview at ten o'clock sale, right at eleven o'clock at the ranch up there in Oakland. 1994 South, 100 East. Don't forget, Jerry Zollinger says, I welcome calls. You want to find out more? Give him a jingle. 670-3833. Absolutely one of the best horse sales anywhere, anytime. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, 32nd annual production sale this Saturday. Don't you miss it. Going to be good. Going to be good, I'll guarantee you. Uh, somebody else that I need you to stop in and see, and that's, of course, our friends at Let's Ride. You know, this weekend, according to Gina, I mean, I'm telling you, it's going to be fantabulous to get outside and get on a four-wheeler or a side-by-side and just get out of Dodge City. I mean, enjoy yourself a little bit. Well, over at Let's Ride, they have an outstanding exhibition right in their front showroom i do not know i've said this many many times i don't know how they got all those outfits in there you need to check it out today all the side by sides all the four wheelers all the accessories i mean you can get lost in there check it out today let's ride 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world monday through friday nine to six saturdays nine to two and oh by the way too if you already have uh, your four wheelers or your side by sides and they need a little service Oh, they've got a super service department at Let's Ride. Highway 24, where the fun is sold. Absolutely. And over in that same area, as I always say, I want you to be aware and cognizant of some really good people that take care of you with your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more. Todd and his staff are very, very helpful and devoted to helping you. All you got to do is pick up the phone and dial the number and say, I'd like to make an appointment, and they will. 436-4424, 436-4424, Cameron and C. Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line, and we're going to be talking to the famous Alaskan fisherman that also owns Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, along with Elite Fitness. Here he is with his casting rod in one hand and his net in the other, Nick Greenwell. Yes, sir. I am an Alaska fishing professional. Aha. Uh-huh. And what does it take to be an Alaskan fishing professional? You just got to go up and brave the weather. Holy cow. We had a great time. Caught some beautiful fish, and we got rained on the whole time. But I tell you what, my freezer's full, and... uh my belly's full, so it was a great time. You were telling me the last time I was over there that you always wore tennis shoes and always went fishing, if you did it on shore, with a slower person because of the bears. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, there's a certain spot up there that we uh, we like to go that is uh, has a ton of bears. And so, yes, my motto is always go with someone that you can outrun. You keep inviting me. <laughs> Well, you're going to have to take me up on it sometime. Though. Okay. <laughs> Listen, what's going on at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation? 
You know, uh, we are just in the, the busy time right now. This is always usually a fairly busy time for us anyway because all of our fall things are really kicking into high gear now mm-hmm. as far as, like, high school sports and everybody's, you know, wanting to run up and down the mountain chasing elk and the factories are really rolling. And uh, so we, we unfortunately, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for everyone else, this is a time where, where we see a lot of injuries. And then to, to top it off, the hospitals are still really in high gear trying to catch up with most of those elective surgeries that were put on hold because of the COVID-19 crisis. And so um, we are, yeah, we're just really, really busy trying to get people uh, back to work and, you know, back on the sports field and back to uh, life as, as they previously knew it before this whole mess this year. You know, I want you to elaborate on something because you touched on it, and I think it bears a little bit more conversation. A lot of guys, uh, they haven't left on their hunting trip yet, and a lot of them are going to be hitting the hills. They're going to be packing their gear, and they're going to go and macho. Yeah, we're going to go get ourselves an elk, and they're going to hit the hills, and the next morning they're going to wake up in their sleeping bag so sore and so stiff, and their legs won't hardly move. What can they do before they leave to prevent these injuries? You know, that's a perfect scenario that you painted because that happens every year, all the time. In fact, I've been in this, the shoes, I've done that myself before. And you, 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 like you say, the next morning you get up and you're like, holy cow, what have I done? Am I that old? Um, but yes, we actually have more and more every year guys that come in, you know, mid to late summer and say, hey, I need to be able to pull my bow back 60 pounds or I need to be able to go up the mountain. And, you know, my right knee's been giving me problems and I don't want to have that you know, issue next year, and so we put them on a preventive program. They don't come in a lot. We might see them two or three times and just set them up on a good home exercise program that maybe some stretching or maybe some strengthening or whatever it is that we're trying to work on. Uh, a lot of times those, those bow hunters especially come in with, you know, rotator cuff issues and things that we need to work through so they can pull that bow back when they need to. And uh, like I say, it's becoming more popular and accepted that they come in for a few visits beforehand uh, and then that gives them a good six weeks to kind of do their thing at home, or, or we set them up on a gym program. I had about six guys come in this year alone um, and just say, hey, uh, you know, I need to be ready for my hunting trip. I'm going to go deer, I'm going to do elk, I'm going to do bear, whatever it is. Uh, and so we set them up on a program and sign them up for a, for a brief gym membership. They we hit the gym hard for six weeks before their trips, and we'll see. Uh, I haven't heard back from them yet because they're getting ready to head off right now, but um, yes, prevention is is the key for sure. Well, see, that dovetails right into both of your great businesses, Elite Fitness in Burley and Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I mean, people should always try to stay fit, try to keep their muscles in peak performance and uh, uh, make sure that they're fit when they hit the hills. But, boy, they can all take a good example of you. You're in perfect uh, physical health, and you know what's going on, and you're always over there working out at your Elite Fitness. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about that place. Yeah, actually, it's uh, like you say, it's it's a beautiful, perfect partnership and extension of what we do here at Burley Physical Therapy. We do more acute care, you know, uh, initially post-op stuff, kind of get you started and get you rolling. Once we get you to a certain point, it used to be that we would say, okay, have a nice life. Here's a sheet with some exercises written on it, you know. Go do your thing and call me if you need me. And um, this is a better transition for us. Most of the, the doctors in the community are really psyched that we're doing this particular model where, you know, we, we see him for maybe three-quarters of the time that we normally would here in the office, and then, you know, the last 20 to 25 percent of their program we actually do over at our office at Elite. We're seeing patients over there now on a formal basis, uh, and so we can kind of slowly integrate some of the maintenance things into their program at the facility, and so when it's time to discharge, they know exactly what to do, how to work the equipment, what's safe, what not to do, and they have 24-7 access, and... Uh, we're just seeing a lot more compliance post-operatively or post-physical therapy-wise with folks. I mean, every time I go over there, I see two or three more people that we've formally seen here that have transitioned and have just been like, this is great, you know, this is great, it's inexpensive, it's convenient, I can come anytime I want, and I really feel like I'm continuing to make gains, and you're here if I need to ask you questions later on. Uh, it just works perfect. Let me ask you this real quick, um, and, and I know it's depending upon the status of the individual and what kind of shape they're in, but normally what would you tell people before they leave on a hunting trip or something that's going to take a lot of exertion, how many weeks in advance should they start a training program? Always six is the magic number on something like that. It takes about six weeks to truly gain, you know, uh, 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 a certain amount of 
kind of strengthen a muscle group or to create flexibility. If you know, a lot of problem, I think flexibility is the missing thing in a lot of programs. Everybody's like, okay, I got to get in shape. What do they do? They go run, they go lift some weights, they do some squats, but nobody stretches. And so, if you're not flexible enough to sustain that, you know, walking up the hill or down the hill or swinging your, you know, rifle. It, you're still going to get sore. You're still going to get injured. And so flexibility, but again, it takes about six weeks to truly lengthen a tendon. We know that, you know, from histology. And so that's what I always tell people. you got to give yourself six weeks. You know, those kids that come in and say, hey, I want to be ready to play football, you know, in the end of, in the end of August. Okay, six weeks. you got to got to start six weeks from now. And then you'll start to see some gains by that time. You know, you have two wonderful businesses, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And I want to stress the fact about uh, uh, the Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation and then also end it with Elite Fitness. But you've got something over there at the physical therapy location that uh, nobody else has in this area, and that's that hydrotherapy pool. Absolutely, yeah. We... I tell you what, when I when I built this building, oh gosh, 2006 or seven, um, I was hesitant because of the price tag, right? But I tell you what, best thing I could have ever done. Uh, a, it sets us apart and it is very unique and it is very high tech. Uh, and I tell you what, it is busy all day, every day. I mean, you can attest to that. It it just creates a, an environment for folks to work out in that takes away about 75 percent of your body weight from your joints, from your back, from your muscles, from everything, and allows us to push you uh, at a higher level without creating problems. You know, after rehab, you're not as sore, and we don't risk uh, creating more inflammation or, or uh, injury to whatever it is that we're working on. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, it really shaves off about a month for most people's, you know, total rehab time if we can do some of that in the pool. Uh, so we're seeing people... Uh, for a shorter period of time with a fewer number of visits by using that pool. Absolutely. Real quick, give us the Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation location and hours, and do the same for Elite Fitness. Sure, yeah. So here at Burley PT, we're at 1263 Bennett Avenue on Suite Number 2. That's around the back of the Asthma and Allergy Clinic and Dr. Crane's uh, office there. And our number here is 678-1191. And then over at Elite, we're on the corner of Oakley and Main at 1200 Oakley. And the number over there is six seven eight two one five five. And I tell you what, folks, uh, this man always in peak shape and peak performance with his tennis shoes on, like I said a minute ago, and only invites slower people to go with him fishing in Alaska. If I ever invite you to go anywhere fishing, just realize that I'm doing that for a reason. You know, you really liked it up there, didn't you? I love it up there. That's my... That's my happy place. You know, everyone, I've been, I, was, I was in the military. I was, I'm an Air Force veteran, and I was uh, stationed overseas in the Pacific a lot of the time. And, and uh, so I spent a lot of time in the Philippines and Korea and Japan and Okinawa. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in Europe. And I tell you what, the prettiest place on the planet is Alaska. Well, I'll tell you what, for help with any kind of physical challenge as far as your surgery, recuperation, or an accident, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, and to stay in shape, Elite Fitness, both with Nick Greenwell and his staff. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. God bless you, man. Thanks. You too. Take care. A really, really good guy. I'm very fortunate to know him and have him as an advertiser and then also utilize his abilities to help my knee, etc. I really appreciate Nick Greenwell. Uh, let's take a look. What have we got to tell you about? Oh, I don't know that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I almost choked. Hold on. Hay fever season, I know many of you are the same way. Sometimes it hits you and you can't help it. I, I am not an expert on electronics. I mean, a lot of people know that. I know if you plug it in, turn a switch, it should go on. Uh, but these people at Patterson's Electronics... They know everything about electronics, everything, all the video surveillance cameras, all the home theater systems, car stereos and speakers, all the complete sound systems. Oh, I mean, Curtis and Lorena, they're like talking to encyclopedias when it comes to electronic devices. Oh, they know it all. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley, and the number to call, 678 678- Six nine nine seven. You stop in and see these really good folks today. Patterson's Electronics in Burley. Really, really good folks. 
Uh, let's see what else have I got to tell you about. Um, once again, I wanted to thank Gina for filling in for me yesterday, the last half hour, so I could get Deanne back to another doctor's appointment. God bless you, Gina. I hope you're listening. Thank you so much. Sean, also, I appreciate all your help. And to all the people, we have had so many nice people call, and some people have stopped by, and the letters, the emails, and everything. God bless each and every one of you. My lovely wife is recuperating. And on the plus side, uh, which is a God's gift, and thank you, all of you. Right now, we're going to, let me see, if i got anything I have to take care of before I introduce this lady, and I'm going to say her name, and then I'm going to be quiet and let her correct me on the pronunciation of her name, as we welcome Dr. Carla Dean Graves to our show. How bad was I? You were absolutely perfect, but I don't want to let too many people know that because it might give you the big hit. Well, I appreciate that, and thank you for keeping me in my place. (laughs) You did perfect. Thank you so much. You are the coordinator of the National Health Care Coalition. What does that mean? That means that for several years now we have had... um, physicians across the nation, leaders of groups of physicians uh, of different organizations that have come together, and we come together every other Monday night, and we discuss uh, medicine uh, and what is happening uh, in the medical profession. Uh, We uh, actually talk about um, many different subjects. However, Uh, As you can imagine, and your listeners can imagine, uh, with this COVID, we've had a great deal to talk about uh, in the last uh, over six months now. Okay, Dr. Graves, I'm going to be very blunt on this program, and Sean, I've got a little feedback coming down the line to my headsets, if you would, please. Dr. Graves... I have had many, many segments on my show regarding COVID, and I've had many programs as to the severity of it, or are we making too much about maybe not as much as it is really? Uh, What is your position on the coronavirus, and what's happened in this country since January? All right, let's start back. Uh, In late December, uh, we knew that uh, COVID was certainly uh, something that was or had been probably uh, released. And when I say we, I am talking about uh, the group of physicians that I work with. Now, they represent uh, around 35 to 37,000 physicians nationwide. When you take these different leaders and you put them together with their organizations, And so uh, there was a group of us that could see that this was going to be hitting our shores. And so we began doing some research. And as we did the research, we discovered that um, Dr. Fauci particularly had uh, used the antiviral hydroxychloroquine. Uh, He definitely used it in SARS-1, and he used it in uh, MERS the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, and they said that it was a very good antiviral. So we began to study this, and we saw that um, the uh, hydroxychloroquine did not kill the virus, per se. What it did was it actually, and I'm trying to explain this rather simply, but yet so that you can get a picture of it. If you take the hydroxychloroquine, it coats the cell and it puts a protective wall around the cell so that the virus does not get in. Mm -hmm. And we all know that a virus must have a living organism to survive. So if it doesn't get in the cell, then it can't survive. But hydroxychloroquine also opens up a channel that lets the zinc get in. And when the zinc gets into the cell, intracellular, then it actually messes up the replication of the virus. And so we saw this um, as a great opportunity to protect our population. 
and we, when we got our research together, then we actually wrote a paper, uh, a letter to the president, and it was hand carried to him. He read the paper on what we had presented as hydroxychloroquine could possibly be, and with zinc, by the way, could possibly be a game changer for the American people. And the very next day is when he came out after he received our letter and he uh, actually announced that this hydroxychloroquine could be a game changer. And never in our wildest dreams did our group even fathom that it would set a political storm up. Uh, we that they blindsided us with that because suddenly hydroxychloroquine was politicized. And we have to look back with who is actually um, running the um, NIH, who's running the CDC, the FDA, all these 5013 Cs uh, that really were created by Congress and should be under the uh, executive branch. But these leaders, and when you trace them back, you find that they have deep pockets into big pharma. Mm -hmm. And if you'll, if hydroxychloroquine, in order to manufacture that, is 0 0.05 cents to manufacture. Now, you could give someone treatment for $20, $30 maybe. But what they're touting is this remdesivir. Now, remdesivir had a study in China that showed it did not have any benefit. Dr. Fauci, unfortunately, stated that he had a state-of-the-art study with remdesivir showing that it decreased the number of days of hospitalization. But what he failed to say was that he had done this study with only five days of remdesivir compared to 10 days of remdesivir. That is not a scientific study. Absolutely. And, no, you, you are correct. And we, it is to be a, either put up against another medication or placebo or something else. You don't compare a, a drug to the number of days to itself another number of days. Right. That doesn't make sense. Let me... We have discovered that Dr. Fauci does have some patents to the NIH of what is in the virus. Now, let's talk quickly about that. The virus was first sequenced by a group in India of scientists. And when they sequenced uh, the virus, they astutely noted that it has four inserts in it of HIV-1 virus that appears to have been placed in the coronavirus. And I'll give you a quick history. Coronaviruses and HIV viruses do not mutate. Viruses, they, they mutate within them their own family, but they don't cross over. It would be like a cow, uh, you know, mating with a pig. It doesn't happen. Just doesn't happen in nature. And so we could see right away, since the um, drug or the uh, virus had been sequenced, we could see that they used coronavirus because coronaviruses are very contagious and spread very easily. So that's the component that certainly does the spreading. But it's the HIV component, HIV-1, that's the four uh, inserts into the coronavirus that appear to actually be responsible for the cytokinin storm that certainly has devastated multiple thousands and thousands of people, millions across the globe. And that is what actually 
um, with that combination has made this such a different virus. And what we need more than ever is not to be considering um, doing a quick fix with these vaccines. Because what happens if it's like the anthrax vaccine that uh, Dr. Tadlick, and Dr. Tadlick is the Assistant Secretary uh, of Preparedness and Response here in the United States. And he actually worked on the anthrax back in the day at Fort Detrick. And they had a vaccine, and he, it was stated that he personally injected 800 uh, armed service individuals with the anthrax vaccine. And now we know that that vaccine had long-term, uh, actually, uh, downside uh, side effects because we know that that is actually associated with the Middle East, of, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Gulf um, Syndrome, the Gulf War Syndrome right. that so many of our veterans have come down with. And so my concern is, and many, many other physicians have called. Go ahead, doctor. We have a call, but go ahead and finish your statement there, please. Our concern is that what replication that we have in looking forward to this, because thus far, the Modera is the leader in the vaccination um, quest. It's fast track that they have made. And Modera has never made a successful um, vaccine yet. And they are making um, this year, by the way, those who might think that they need to run out and get their flu shot, they're making it this year with dog kidney cells. And we are concerned that that may cause, we're not sure, but we, but we, it may cause a, um, actually a positive uh, COVID test. And so we are watching this very closely to see what happens. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, these veterans have now, unfortunately, they got this anthrax. And so uh, Dr. Cadwick, uh surprisingly, and shouldn't be surprised, he has ties into what's called emergent biosolutions. And they are... Uh, pushing, of course, the vaccine because they're trying to help uh, create this vaccine. Right, right. But what is the motive between, you know, for Dr. Cadlick to be actually telling Dr. Hahn at the FDA to stop the emergent use of hydroxychloroquine and to even be squelching it? We have to find out what is the motivation behind all of this? Right. right. Dr. Graves to be answered let me let me interject if i may i'm i'm short on time and i've got a thousand questions and that's not going to do well for either one of us so i've got a caller that needs to get in here with his thoughts go ahead caller please you're on the air caller good morning you're on the air quickly Evidently, they've hung up. Uh, Dr. Graves, let me ask you this. Uh, Hydroxychloroquine, the president was touting the use of this months ago, and the left and the Democrats ridiculed him and belittled him because of what he had said. I have heard from other doctors on my show that remdesivir is a drug that uh, has been touted by some, but I've also done my research and found out that it's not a good drug if people have a pre-existing condition with kidney disease, heart disease, etc. Am I right or wrong? You are right. Six percent of those who have been on remdesivir have had cardiac arrhythmias. And I had the opportunity, and I cannot name name, and I cannot name institution, because should I, this individual, 
could lose their job. And that's how politicized this has become. And um, this individual is the world-renowned um, known individual of cardiac arrhythmia QT interval prolongation. And what that means is it's a short in your wiring, uh, basically. In your wiring, you have, you have your plumbing and your wiring. And when we talk about a blockage, it's not in your plumbing that we're talking about necessarily. It's in your wiring that it shorts out. And this is what they have been touting uh, at these 501c3 uh, organizations that we have allowed to run our country. Um, they uh, keep touting that, oh, this is so dangerous. Why is it so dangerous? I, I, out of Dr. Fauci's mouth, I heard this. Oh, well, we can't use, we don't want to use the hydroxychloroquine because it's such, you would have to use such higher doses than you would in rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. And in rheumatoid, and what Dr. Fauci failed to say is that um, in rheumatoid arthritis, most people are on 200 milligrams two times a day. We're talking about maybe five days of that and then later on, taking one pill a week, then one every two weeks, and then one every month. Why? Because hydroxychloroquine has a 22.4-day um, half-life, and it begins to accumulate. And so we don't need to be taking a lot of it. And Dr. Fauci just plain did not tell the truth when he said that it would have to be much higher doses. It doesn't have to be higher doses. It's lower doses. And by the way, just very quickly, I want to tell your listeners that they need a vitamin D level of 50 to 75 because thus far we have found that those individuals who have that level of vitamin D have not gone on ventilators. All right, Dr. Graves, we believe we have another caller on the line with a question. I'm going to ask the caller to keep it brief. I'm short on time. Go quickly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as doc, uh, you got your group needs to, will you, he be allowed to meet with the president? And would you would he be willing to put you out in front like the frontline doctors that somehow have been forgotten? And uh, we need to know who you you know what the, the the country needs to know what you're telling us. Now another guest on this program has said that people that were treated with remdesivir. They weren't dying from COVID. They were de being, they were dying because of the remdesivir. We just talked about that, Randy. We just talked about that. She just answered that question and was in total agreement. Yes, and we we have to go with the, with the um, Chinese study. The Chinese study was a small study. I have to admit, it was a very small study of individuals that had the remdesivir, but it showed absolutely no. Uh, benefit whatsoever. Um, I've uh, helped um, myself and uh, Dr. Harvey uh, Risch uh, from Yale. Um, we have been working on a video uh, with the producer, and we have actually produced a video that we are going to be releasing soon. Um, we wanted uh, the president to have an opportunity to see it first, um, and I think that that's going to probably be done, uh, hopefully, this week. Dr. Uh, before the week's over, we only have today and tomorrow. So at least that's what I was told earlier that through the day it looked like it, that may happen. But we want people to know, do not rush out to get your vaccine. In fact, uh, there, Dr. Collins, of course, who is head of the NIH, was asked the question by a reporter uh, they said that they had signed up for a study. And they said, but if we don't get in the study, shall we go on and get the vaccine? Dr. Collins' response was very, very telling. He said, well, you may want to wait on that and see what the trials show first. Yes. You may get something that you don't want. Dr. Graves, let me enter. 
Let me interject, if I may, quickly. I can see right now, and Sean, again, the feedback. Cut that down, if you would, please. Uh, I can see right now I'm going to have to ask you to come back on this program. You are far and above most everyone that I've had on this program talking about COVID. I do want to ask you one final thought and then invite you back at a later time. The lockdown of America and the killing of our economy. Your thoughts quickly. I've got two minutes left in this segment. It was totally unnecessary. Totally. Um, I just talked uh, with someone about Sweden just a couple of days ago. And as we know, and if everybody says, well, yes, but they have the same type of population. They don't have a diverse population as America does, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. Nevertheless, they did not use the mask. They went on about their business. They kept their schools open. They kept their economy open. And they have done far, far better than we in fact, I have graphs that show that those countries who have used hydroxychloroquine have had a much better response. We in America are lagging behind the rest of the world. America, Canada, and the United Kingdom, who have disallowed hydroxychloroquine to be used early and very early and with the onset of the illness as well as prevention, we are lagging behind that we are to be a world leader, not so, certainly in this case. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time and the effort to come on my program, and we've had this interview with Dr. Carla Dean Graves. I'm going to be calling and making another time to have you back on the show if you'll consent to come back. You are outstanding with this information, and I've got so many more questions. Thank you very much, and God bless you for being on the show. Thank you for the opportunity, sir, and thank your listeners. Thank you very much. Of all the people that I've had on the show and lucky enough to contact and say that they would come on the program, this Dr. Graves, I think, was the most explanatory about what's going on. We will have her back. I will schedule it for next week. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Carla Dean Graves, talking about the coronavirus. Uh, Right now, it's time for the weather, and the weather is brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, and they are the professionals in accounting services to the Minicash area and have been for well over 50 years. They know. They know, and they can help you, your family, and your business. Tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, retirement planning, all of this and so much more. Offices, of course, in Burley and Rupert. The professionals serving you, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Feels a little bit like fall today, but we are going to be warming up as we make our way through the rest of the week. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Expecting sunny skies for today. Slight breeze out of the east at about 6 miles an hour. High of 73 tonight. Clear skies with a low of 43 tomorrow. Sunny, high of close to 80 degrees, and the winds are going to be picking up just a little bit on the west in the afternoon. Gusts as high as 18 miles an hour. By Friday night, clear skies, low of 45. Sunny and 82 for Saturday. Could get close to 90 for Sunday and Monday. Stop look at your weather forecast. I urge you to get a hold of these folks that I call the professionals, and they are the best in accounting services to you and the entire area, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. As I stated, they've got offices located at 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Don't forget the professionals that serve you, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Wow. I, again, I want to really say thank you to Dr. Carla Dean Graves. I have her number. We will be contacting her agents to have her back on the program this next week. Uh, There's so many more things I wanted to ask about, but time, of course, ran out, and uh, we will have her back. I want to remind you that uh, today, being Thursday, September 10th, the last day of my broadcasting for this week, if you're hungry, like I am, and I've turned into the chief cook and bottle washer, and boy, I don't do a very good job. If you're hungry and starving to death, I know some great places to go, and I'm going to tell you all about them right now. How about the AC Drive-In? I love stopping there. I really do. They've got that famous Farmer Brown Burger. I just love that. My grandkids do, too. AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley, and they got the kids' meals, you know, the chicken nuggets and the spry and the drink and everything, and 
then of course they've got all the different burgers and they've got all the different shakes oh man you're gonna love the food at the ac drive-in 601 east main in burley well how about taco bandito 2301 overland in burley They're back to normal, and by golly, it's one of the best doggone places to go to get together with your friends for a morning cup of coffee and a breakfast burrito. (laughs) Scrambled eggs, bacon and sausage, cheese, onions, tomato sauce on a tortilla shell. Knock your boots off. Delicious at Taco Bandito and all the menu choices. Great. Taco Bandito 2301 Overland in Burley. Let's move over now to not one, but two locations of Burgers Etc. 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley. Oh my. They've got all these great burgers and they've got corn. Listen to this. This is unbelievable. Corn dogs and burritos for only a buck twenty nine. You gotta stop in. You're gonna love the people in the entire menu at two locations of burgers, etc. in Rupert and Burley. And last but not least, let's head on over to Stevo's Food made the way you love it at 290 south 600 west of hayburn Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they've got tasty steaks like the fillet and the ribeye and the sirloin i'm drooling all over the microphone and don't forget they've got a menu that's absolutely just chock full of delicious food and really nice people serving you too dedicated staff at Stevo's, located at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn, and those are just a few great places to go when you're hungry, and I am, and you're starving to death. Absolutely. What do we got coming up next hour? Well, we got a full slate. We've got uh, Cache County School Days with our dear friend, Debbie Critchfield. We've got a business salute with another great friend, Trent from Les Schwab on Overland and Burley. And then at 1032, we've got John Perrazzo that's going to tell us all about the dangers of Black Lives Matter. Uh, Caller, I've got 30 seconds. Real fast. Go. Thing to that lady intently, and then one of my employees came over to me and interrupted me. And I, she is so important. It's so important what she said, and the country needs to know this. And it's being hushed. And it was so important. And then I missed that very part that you said, and I, I apologize. I didn't mean to do that. No, no. Listen, I ask my listeners, you know, uh, to listen intently. Uh, I know you missed perhaps what was answered. We talked about remdesivir, and I wasn't going to cover the same ground twice because I was lacking on time. I understand your dilemma of not hearing that, but I'm going to have her back next week because I've got a million questions to ask her that need to be addressed on the radio for public consumption. i got to run, Randy, but I do appreciate your call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's all right, buddy. Don't worry about it. Got to run? I'll be back in seven. Don't go away. Uh, Here we go. Kind of smoothly sailing into the hour number three. Zeb Bell at the ranch. Zeb at the ranch. Brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley. Les Schwab Tire Centers with a very safe, clean environment and the best in tires. And, of course, our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Helping you get back to being you. Right now, I also want to take the time to tell you a little bit about our friends, and they are our friends, Matt and Kelly Wiggins, that are the owners of Greystone Crossing, and believe me, a 12-bedroom home for seniors. Absolutely a beautiful place at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Absolutely three meals a day, snacks, housekeeping, local transportation, all included in the rent, and let me tell you, it's just a little bit uh, from Walmart and shopping. I'm telling you what a beautiful brand new home. Check it out. Give them a call at 650-4979. That number again, 650-4979. And they'll set up an appointment for you to see Greystone Crossing Senior Living, 1221 21st Street in 
Hayburn. Uh, another couple of folks I want to talk about, and they are with 7K Metals. And I really urge you to listen to this because you can help build yourself your own financial security and future through silver purchases and 7K Metals. That's right. It's a great saving opportunity for you and a valued treasure for your loved ones. And I urge you to call my friends, Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon at 4 4- Three zero three two five nine, and tell them I told you to call, and they'll explain all about how you can save with silver purchases from Seven K Metals. Right now, let's go to the phone line, and it's time for Cache County School Days. And one of my favorite people to talk to, the communications director for Cache County, and that's of course the lovely Debbie Critchfield. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I appreciate that you'll still take my calls. Well, I'd always take your call. Uh, Sean, again, the feedback coming down the line, if you could back that gain off a little bit. Debbie, we're into the school year, and I think needless to say, what's going on, what's happening, or not? Well, I I think that um, understanding that we've been able to get kids back into school that um, we've been able to address issues as they've come up. Um, We've had uh, two confirmed cases of of COVID. Um, Both have recovered. We did not have mass shutdown. I I think it's a a real signal to and and an acknowledgement that preparation and um, action um, when when procedures needed to be in place, that that they're, they're being effective. I absolutely salute you and Cassia County Schools for what's being done and has been done. Uh, We cannot, and I emphasize this on my program every day, we cannot live in a bubble. We cannot live in a fishbowl worrying about the what-ifs. We have to consider what is in society, and I really salute you uh, and the school board for going ahead with school as, and I'll use the word usual. Well, as usual as, as we possibly can get, and, and um, this is, a, again, a, a recognition of our school board, of our administration. They individually wanted to have kids get back into school and have an in-person experience, and, and as they discussed that as a board um, and, and worked within the procedures, I mean, everyone's got respect for uh, the virus and for what's happening. It certainly isn't something that we, we just pretend as though we're not living in this universe right now. Um, However, they recognized that there were ways to to live within the the new environment that we've got. And and I think the fact that um, we've been in school for a couple of of weeks, we haven't had mass shutdowns, Uh, we've been able to participate in extracurricular activities, particularly sports, um, that that we're hopeful. Um, We're we're still, you know, trying to, to make sure that that we can uh, keep things under control and as much as we can, but we're hopeful that we can stay in school. Let me ask you this, and I don't know if you've had a chance to visit with some of these students or not, but what's the perspective of what's happened in the spring of the year and forcing schools to close, and now they're back in school? What's the perspective and some of the thoughts of the students? Have you had a chance to talk to anyone? I have, and, and what's interesting, um, and, and I guess really not surprising, one of the first um, or a, a common theme um, for students uh, in the junior high, high school, and, and those are the students I visited with and, um, anyway, was just they had forgotten how long the school day was. <laughs> when we uh, pivoted in the spring and, and went to the online, it was obviously a, a different format, and so you could, anyway, there was just a different setup for that. And so now getting back into the classroom that first couple of weeks, that was one of the comments when I would uh, visit with neighbors or, you know, students around the community. How was it? How did it feel? They loved being back um, with their friends. They loved being back with their teachers. And then the last thing was, oh, it's just we got to get back into the school mode. I feel like the days are really long. I want to take the same question and change just a few of the words and insert the word teachers. What are their thoughts? I have heard from teachers, uh, maybe not that the day has been long, they are so happy to be back with their students. 
that connection cannot be overstated. Um, there, there is a, a great opportunity within that virtual or online setting for learning to take place, but um, few things can replace that, that personal connection. And, and teachers, that's why they got into education. They like connecting with a the student. They like looking at the, 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 that light bulb, that imaginary light bulb that goes on over a student's head when they get it, when it clicks. And I know that they have missed that. You know, there must have been a lot of preparation and a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of meetings and everything else with the staff and, of course, uh, the teachers getting ready to coordinate all the educational facilities to the kids, more so this year than ever before. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, and in different preparation in different ways, clearly every year uh, teachers prepare over the summer and, and spend time to, to get their, their materials and their lessons together. Um, this had that added element of how am I going to do this in a way that protects the safety not only of the student but of them individually. And as you know, Kaja School District has not mandated um, nor required masks. Um, certainly, uh, student, we've had students come to school with masks, um, and we have teachers that wear them. And we've tried to provide some plexiglass shields so that you can still see people's faces and, you know, if a, a student needs to approach a desk. Um, with the teacher, then there's um, a, a barrier of sorts we've, we've seen and when we've been out shopping or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but that, that was, I think, probably the most challenging part. How do I present the material and, and how do I make sure that I am uh, responsive to, to students' needs, but keeping kind of that, that safety at the, the front of their minds? I'm going to ask you this, and I don't know if you can gauge the answer on this, but from the closure back in March till the opening in August, how far behind do you think the kids are in various grades? This is a troubling question. We're not sure. And this first little bit in the school, uh, teachers are, are doing some of those assessments to determine um, nationally, we, we see that there's been significant loss. Being out of school for nearly six months, um, I don't care if you were the top of the class, uh, that's going to have an impact on um, your, your abilities and, and where you are with achievement. And I, I, some of these, we may not know for a while, but that, was, that has been and will be a priority for, for teachers to understand where their, their students are. It, it's, like I say, it's a troubling thought. You mentioned earlier that, uh, of course, extracurricular activities are going, and I just was curious, are the numbers the same, or have some opted out of the programs? As far as student participants? Yes. Uh, to my knowledge, that the, they are the same. The, the students are still engaged, and, and those that were interested in a particular sport or, or team um, that, they, that they have come out. Um, I think as far as the um, actual competitions where we've had crowds, I, I think that the numbers are down a little bit, not significantly. But again, it, it's like everything that we're doing. Some people will say, well, I typically have gone to this football game, but maybe with my health factors, I'll, I'll probably opt out on this one. Um, but I don't think that we've seen a significant decline in, in the support and for sure not in the student participation. What does the future look like? I, I just had a doctor on that is absolutely so well versed on the coronavirus and what should have done, what been done and what has been done. But what about you folks on behalf of Cache County Schools? Uh, do you have some kind of a long range proposal as far as how you're going to handle the rest of the school year with not only this virus, but also other strains of the flu and the common cold? Well, uh, for now, the, the plan is to go to the end of the first semester, which um, ends shortly before Christmas, and then reassess. Right now, we're in, um, we're in the yellow category as far as what public health has determined, and the board's educational response to that has been to go in person Monday through Thursday, and for consistency's sake, um, they're not going to make any changes up until uh, January, if there are changes to be made. And, and so the board is tracking that. But for right now, I, I think the, the focus is um, for staying in school. Now, to your, your comment and question regarding other illnesses and so forth, we've got a, a very big push right now on um, making sure our students and faculty get vaccinated for influenza. 
and and Deb, I know you are a huge um, immunization proponent. Yes. Um, I I will share with you that any time we put this information out into the school district, there's there's some pretty loud um, opponents uh, to this, and so we have to. Not only are we trying to get the information out about this is what you can do for vaccines, but we're always trying trying to help people understand why why we promote it. Absolutely. Debbie, you know, the coronavirus and the fears and all the thoughts about what to do or what not to do have taken over and encompassed the entirety of starting school. But there's so many other things that need to be discussed. I mean, new teachers, possibly changes in the curriculum, etc. What do you want to tell the audience while you have a chance here in the next three minutes about the new school year? And let's forget the virus for a few seconds. Well... I know our teachers are uh, focused on the essentials for learning. I think that that's one of the, the takeaways from the spring. Um, and clearly, whatever subject a teacher teaches, they believe that that is the essential. But, with, but within any subject matter, I think teachers are, are making sure that they cover those foundational um, aspects of it and, and get to the, you know, to the bare bones. Um, I know our, our teachers are concerned about making sure that should things significantly and drastically change as far as the in-person um, setting, uh, that, that they are comfortable and feel capable of being able to deliver education, whatever that looks like. And, and so I think that that's um, something that they're being trained on within the district. How do we help support the people that are doing the teaching? I have found that the parents are, are being... Um, uh, respectful of keeping kids home, even, you know, well, my child had a runny nose. Well, I kept him home for a couple of days because I don't want to uh, impact another student's ability to go to school. And, and so I think that the lessons learned over the last few months, um, there's a greater appreciation for, for what we do. Um, I think that, that education in general in, in the United States has been something that we've taken for granted because it's just always been there and it's always been free. And now we've had this um, experience where that other countries have experienced, and, and I think that that has in, increased the attention and engagement on all levels. One final thought here this morning, Debbie, uh, with all the hard work and the study and the application to get the school back open again, all the schools in Cache County back open again, how would you think you compare with other school districts around the state? Um, I know I'm biased, but I'm, I'm being honest uh, when I say, and I do, and you know I have a, a state perspective here, Kasia is getting the job done. Um, I, I hope the community appreciates um, the leadership coming from our board and from our, our central office and our administrators to be able to do this because not every school district in our state, not only are they not in person, but some aren't, aren't even open yet. Um, some have just started with the online um, component and are hoping things improve. And um, I appreciate the fact that there was a willingness and a dedication to, to make sure that we could get students and teachers back in the facility, let's have some games. Um, and as you pointed out, that didn't go without the challenges and sleepless nights of how are we going to do this because we want to keep everybody safe. And I, I certainly don't want to jinx us because we're only a couple of weeks <laughs> into it. But the fact that we've had a couple of cases, we've responded well to that, gives me confidence for the rest of the semester. Absolutely. You are a breath of fresh air when it comes to information. I really applaud you for the way you handle everything. Debbie Critchfield, Communications Director for Cache County Schools. God bless you for being on the program this morning, and please come back anytime you have the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. I like that lady. She really is good at what she does. Oh, my. Don't forget, this Saturday, my goodness, the great Big Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch 32nd Annual Production Sale. Oh, last year I saw a little filly that I wanted to buy up there so bad, and I didn't get up to the sale. I had some other commitments. Well, I'll tell you what. They've got the top-notch colts and fillies for sale, and it's going to be Saturday. Preview at 10, sale at 11 at the ranch in Oakley, 1994 
south, 100 east of Oakley. Oh, yeah. Like I said, top Colts and Phillies from the top quarter horse bloodlines. Call Jerry for more information, 670-3833. Preview at 10, sale at exactly 11 o'clock. Zollinger Quarter Horse Annual Production Sale this Saturday in Oakley. Don't you miss it. want to also give you a great big shout-out about our friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. Hello, Jeff, old buddy, 459 Overland and Burley, along with the rest of his staff. They've got all the mattresses, all the bedroom sets for a good night's sleep with the Simmons Beauty Rest mattresses. And, of course, they've got all your window coverings as we're going to be spending more time in the house this fall and winter. And they've got all the window coverings, the blinds and the shades, and they've got a great selection of floor covering and carpet. Whew, the list goes on. And all your furniture needs, too. Where? At Lee's Furniture Floors and More. 459 Overland in Burley. You stop in and see those great folks today. Right now, it's time for our business salute, and I believe that we have our dear friend on the air. Getting him on the line right now. That a boy, Sean. Thank you very much. We're going to be going over to the Overland location of Les Schwab, and Trent's going to be on the phone with us in just a moment. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, don't miss our friend John Perrazzo. And he's written an outstanding piece, uh, Marxist Hate Dressed Up as Racial Justice in Regards to the Black Lives Matter. So don't miss that coming up at about 1032 this morning in just a very few minutes. Let's see if he's on the air and ready to go. He's on the air. Uh, thank you, Sean. With us right now is not only uh, a manager and friend of Les Schwab uh, on Overland, but he's just an honest, good old boy that I really enjoy talking to. Trent on Overland in Burley, Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving the public with the best in tires, uh, brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, and batteries. What did I miss, Trent? You know what? You hit it all right on the head. And, you know, farm service, truck service, giant tires, we lawnmowers, we, we're ready to do anything for you. You know, I want to stress that a little bit with you, and that's one of the reasons I wanted you on this morning. We're going into harvest, and I mean we're seeing the sugar beets and the beans and pretty quick the spuds and everything. And, boy, when there's a breakdown, they need help from you. You're right there, aren't you? Yes, sir, Seth. We are. We, we love doing what we do, and uh, and we take a lot of pride in just making sure that everybody gets that harvest done it's a great time of the year here in the magic valley you know i gotta ask you a question and maybe you can answer this and maybe you can't but when i talk about an inventory of tires at every location of your magic valley les schwab tire centers what kind of numbers are you talking about at your location alone on the number of tires that you keep in stock well it's that's a great question Jeff. we i mean we have everything from all the different tractor tires and the harvesting equipment down to, you know, it's just not the basic little 16-inch tires anymore, even on your family SUV. So we definitely have to keep a lot, and we all have a one-team, one goal. We help each other out. If we don't have them, we get them from neighboring stores, whatever we got to do to get the customer going back on the road safely and secure. I want to ask you about tread designs. I've often wondered, and I've failed to ask on certain occasions, how do they determine what kind of tread design is going to be the best for their driving conditions? Well, a lot of that's uh, that's our job, Zeb, is to make sure that we're getting in the, uh, you know, ask what your driving needs are, and your, you know, and how many miles you're driving per year, uh, and then we try and get you into that best tire. Most tires are all all seasons anymore. Um, you know, and then we can also there's performance tires and and like I said, a lot of the a lot of the family SUV vehicles are coming with a performance tire now. Okay, and uh, then they go in, and it doesn't take long to find just the right tire for just their vehicle. Correct? Yes. Yep. Yep. We stock most of our stores all stock. Uh, have you know, we always try and give you a supermarket selection and give you uh, try and give you at least two or three choices, and then. Uh, yeah, get you in and in, in and out services. That's what we pride on is the service after the sale. I want to talk to you a little bit about something else you offer, and that's peace of mind tire protection. What does that mean? What that means is if you ruin the tire, we replace the remaining value of the tire. Uh, if you ruin the tire within the first 25% of its tread life, it's replaced free, and that's at over 450 locations. Uh, and that's, that's And we're in a lot of small towns that, 
you know, a lot of our competitors are not in, and we all stock the same tires, and it's and it's all free. That's the nice nice thing about it. You don't have to buy any extended warranties or contracts, anything like that. It's it's all covered up to that. You know, Trent. Another thing that I want to talk about are some of the amenities that I mentioned a moment ago, especially like the brake service. Boy, if people have got trouble with their brakes, Les Schwab has great, highly trained technicians to work on those brakes. Absolutely, we have the we have the nation's uh, best warranty on the brake service, and that's once again you can get it done at over you know 450 locations. That warranty is honored. Uh, it, we, you know, we take a lot of pride in what we do, and we do we sell a lot of brakes, and uh, and it's it's a great service. And all yes, all our employees are highly highly trained and ready to go to get you going. I would think that you'd agree with me on this next part because we felt a little bit of a pre warning on a chilly couple of mornings where it got a little bit cold, and that means they better be checking those batteries. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. That's a great call, and yeah, that you know he's hard on batteries, but that cold weather, that first cold snap, well, definitely we we definitely feel the effect of that as well. But st- please stop by, and we can at any one of our you know locations in the Magic Valley, and we can uh, check those batteries for you at free charge. And uh, and we, once again, we have a very good selection of batteries too. What would you say makes the Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, or all the Les Schwab Tire Centers in general, what makes them so popular? I, I think the community support that we do, uh, and the pride in our, and the pride is what we call the pride in the pole sign of our Les Schwab, uh, you know, and how they treat us, and we. Uh, like Les always said, you know, this just, just take care. Of, he takes care of us. We just take care of of our customers, and we have a lot of pride in what we do and a pride in our company. And what about the hours that you're open, and you specifically on Overland and the other locations? Uh, we're 7.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, and then 7.30 to 5 on Saturday. By golly, I'll tell you what, I am proud every day I turn the microphone on to have you, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers as our major sponsor. Trent, you're doing a super job. God bless you, and thanks for coming on the program. Zeb, it's my pleasure, and we thank you for all you do for the Valley, and we God bless you as well. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I really enjoy these folks. They're so easy to work with and so helpful to everybody with their great service. Your seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Right now, we're going to take a little break and send it back over to Sean at the main studio. I will be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, thank you very much and welcome back to our last half hour. This next gentleman that I have on my program is a gentleman that is the editor of discoverthenetworks.org. And he has just written a piece that I want you to listen to very carefully on this program because it absolutely tells you about the Marxist hate dressed up as racial justice and that concerns Black Lives Matter. John Perrazzo, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Well, it's my pleasure and I really salute you for having the nerve and the backbone to write exactly what is going on with Black Lives Matter. I have never trusted that organization. I know it's an organization of hate and animosity against this United States. How wrong am I? You're right on target. Uh, You talk about hate and animosity toward the United States. Just a week or two ago, we had an incident where in in Oakland, California, a a mob of about 700 of these Black Lives Matter protesters was marching through the streets of Oakland, and they were chanting nothing uh, nothing other than uh, death to America, the type of thing you'd expect to hear in a country like Iran. Um, Black Lives Matter... When it formed itself about seven years ago, they they deliberately and very deceptively chose a a slogan that they knew that no one could take issue with. Black Lives Matter is a perfectly fine slogan, and nobody nobody would disagree with it. So they used it uh, as a kind of a shield for what, as you described, the Marxist agenda, so that in the event that people saw through their 
their facade and, and, and saw their Marxist agenda that actually underlies the slogan and dared to criticize the organization, then the organization could in turn t- turn around and say, what, you don't believe in black lives, you don't believe that black lives matter, or are you a racist? So they, they had it set up that way intentionally. That's why they chose the name, but the, there's no question. It's, it's very evident for anyone who studies this group that their principal objective is to promote Marxism and has absolutely nothing to do with the dignity or the value of black lives. John, I'm going to be using a shotgun approach here with you this morning, so bear with me on my questions. I'm going to go all over the board to get...